T-cell activation T-cell activation is a complicated process, we will keep it simple by discussing the main steps only. We know that mature T-cells are of two types, CD4 positive T-cells and CD8 positive T-cells. These are naive T-cells since they have not encountered any antigen yet. First we will study the activation of naive CD4 positive T cells. Let's say this is an antigen presenting cell which engulfs an extracellular antigen by the process of phagocytosis. This APC digests the engulfed antigen into peptide fragments and displays the peptide fragment on its plasma membrane. Now peptide antigen is present on the surface of antigen presenting cell as MHC2 peptide complex. Recall that this process is known as antigen processing and presentation. These cells migrate from the site of infection to the lymph nodes, where they present antigen to the recirculating naive T cells. These cells are CD4 positive naive cells because they recognize MHC2 peptide complex displayed by the antigen presenting cell. The activation of this naive T cell requires two signals. So, T cell activation is a two signal process. Let's see what are these signals? First signal of T cell activation. Here you can see that TCR recognize and bind the antigen and CD4 corceptor bind the MHC2 molecule. This recognition and binding by TCR and CD4 generates the first signal of T cell activation. For full T cell activation second signal is required. Second signal enhances the first signal and is known as co-stimulation. Without co-stimulation the T cells which have recognized the antigen remain in a prolonged state of inactivity. This state of inactivity is known as energy. Co-stimulators include cytokines or a pair of plasma membrane molecules. More than 20 co-stimulators are known. The most important known co-stimulator pair is B7 or CD80 and CD28. CD28 of this pair acts as receptor and is present on T cell. B7 is known as ligand and it is present on the antigen presenting cell. These molecules also makes the two cells to adhere together for more time. Other co-stimulators include CD2, CD28, and CD45. These two signals result in the activation of T cell. As a result the activated T cell synthesizes and secretes interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 acts as autocrine cytokines which means it binds to its specific receptor on the same T cell. T cell undergoes proliferation and differentiation rapidly and soon a population of effector T cells and memory T cells is generated. These CD4 positive effector T cells develop into diverse subsets of T helper cells. And CD4 positive memory T cells have ability to quickly generate more effector and memory cells if encountered by the same antigen in future. The T cell activation of CD8 positive T cells is similar with few differences. Such as, naive CD8 positive T cells recognize antigen presented by MHC1 molecule. The co-stimulation of these cells also occur by interleukin-2 and other cytokines produced by helper T cells. These helper cells are those which recognize and bind the same antigen. Once activated these activated CD8 positive T cell result in the generation of effector T cells and memory T cells. Effector CD8 positive T cells are the cytotoxic T cells that attack the body cells affected by the pathogen or antigen. 
and memory T cells are able to quickly proliferate and differentiate into more effector cells and memory cells if the same pathogen infects in future.